Good morning, and welcome to your weekly devotion. I, I love going to big gatherings where many churches congregate together, ultimately to worship the Lord, but it's, it's also nice to meet up with friends that you might have made through going to these gatherings, and being around so many people that share the same beliefs as you. There's a certain atmosphere at these events that it's just, it's so special. Jumping and dancing at extreme amounts is the norm. It's something special being in a crowd of people all jumping together to a song. Powerful moves of God take place at these gatherings. It's, it's fantastic. Something that is mentioned or even preached about at almost every one of these conventions or camps that I've gone to is about continuing the same flow of the Spirit that is felt at these occasions. And you want to know what is very difficult and never really seems to happen? Keeping that spirit alive that you feel at these conventions. It's more than just the jumping and dancing. I don't think anybody expects you to keep that same level of energy at every single service you go to when you return to your home church. What they try to get at is the passion for God that is experienced at these places. That mentality that is present of wanting to be used, of wanting to do anything you can for God. And that's easy to do and say when you're surrounded by believers and you have these powerful services morning and night every single day and you don't get, really get a say into whether you show up. It's easy to be passionate for God when no matter how loud you yell or weep, the person next to you is probably still louder. It's a lot harder when you get back home and you don't feel the same energy from the few services a week and the couch is a lot more appealing when there's no one forcing you to go to the services. It's a lot harder when you're the only true follower of Christ in your workplace or your school and it's, it's so easy to slip back into your old life making no real difference in the way you live your life. I'll be honest, I've left these places before thinking that I'm going to do all these things for God. I'm going to reach out to so many people. I'm going to help out so much at church. I'll do anything I can to help you, God. But when I got home, I thought to myself that it would be much easier to keep things how they are. Maybe I got a few weeks still so excited for what God was going to do through me, but as the monotony of daily life went on and on, the desire to better my and other lives faded. Why would I risk that friendship on the off chance they would actually be interested in the church? Why, why would I give up my time just to do a little bit of extra work at the church? No, no, it would be much, much easier just to let life stay the same. And then a new convention or a new camp rolls around and, oh, I'm back on board. I'm so ready to make a change. And then reality comes back around and knocks me back down to what I was. It seems like no matter how many times a preacher tells us to maintain the energy felt at, at a gathering, it fades away soon after we return to normal life. The imagery of becoming a force to be reckoned with in the spiritual world fades back to comfort and normalcy. While getting a powerful move of God in your life is very important, what is even more important is keeping that spirit moving and actually using it to make a change in your life. God didn't come to this earth to show off the signs he could do and how powerful he could make an event, but to strengthen his relationship with us. That relationship that he ended up dying for to protect us. Similarly, our relationship with God isn't about the powerful moves and the miracles he can do in our life. While those are wonderful and important to have, we are ultimately here to have a relationship with God, not to have a relationship with the works that he can do. Matthew 7, 21 through 23 tells us, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. It's wonderful to see the, the, these signs and have the rush of being in a big crowd, everybody jumping and dancing. But if it doesn't translate to a steady, dedicated relationship with God, it is ultimately, ultimately worthless aside from the temporary satisfaction gained from these events. If you treat God like a performance, something that you would only enjoy when it's grabbing your attention, then he has no obligation to help you when you need him. That spirit needs to move continuously instead of these short bursts. 
It's been said before, but it's important to remember that a relationship with God is a marathon, not a sprint, or a series of sprints. David was a man who kept the spirit moving for most of his life. He kept devotion to God very consistently in life. However, there was one time where he decided to not keep it moving. The kingdom of Israel was very keen on expanding its borders early in its existence, with the largest example being during King David's reign. David would always go out and fight with his men. He could have only been involved in war for the celebrations, the party after the battle. But no, David kept the spirit moving. He didn't just go for the highs, but he was there for the lows as well. But there's a story that I'm sure most of us know. David should have been out to battle as he normally was, but he decided that he wasn't going to keep the flow, but he was going to stay back at home this time. And you see, the one time that David stopped that flow, it led him to committing adultery and indirect murder as well. By stopping the flow just one time, David resulted in the death of one of his most trusted and close men and the death of the child that resulted from David's sin. Now David is still looked upon as a righteous man, and rightfully so. However, his life is a perfect example of how stepping out of that flow can have terrible impacts on life. If David stayed in the flow like he should have, none of that would have happened. But for whatever reason, David decided he only wanted to ride the highs of celebration instead of keeping that spirit for the lows of the battle. We can't live life like these examples, only having experiences with God when it's big and exciting, whether it be signs and wonders or a convention and camp. These results, this results in no change in your life, still sticking to the monotony and sin of this world. What's far more important is keeping that spirit in the lows, when it's not so easy to stay motivated. Ambition to do something for God is nothing if it's not acted upon during daily life. This walk is about devotion, not big acts of wonder. These things come second to a real relationship and connection to the one who died for you. It can be extremely difficult to keep the flow you experience at one of these large church gatherings. But if you can manage to hold on to that same excitement for God, expectation for what he can do, then you will have something truly special. And that's when the big moves and incredible signs can come as an effect of a strong and passionate foundation with the one who makes those signs possible. So as you walk through your daily life, try to keep God's spirit moving no matter what, because that's what it's all about. Have a great day.